Great. All right. So I just hit record on the meeting. Um, for anybody listening in, this is the June 10th, 2021 uh, meeting of the Economic Development Commission of the Town of Waterford. The meeting, as I said, is being recorded. If there's anybody who is either watching live or watches from home later and has questions about this meeting, you can certainly call the Planning and Development Office at 860-444-5813, and we can help answer any questions about what you see or hear tonight. Um, with that, we want to make sure that we, so we've established a forum. We've got Ed, Jill, Dan, and Eric, and if Greg um, wanted to be, so we could seat Greg for Kevin's seat, so that there would be five regular members sitting here tonight. Um, so with that, and I believe the next item would be the approval of the May minutes. Does anybody have any comments on those? No comments? Motion to accept the motion. Yep, we just need a motion and a second and then a, a vote. Motion to approve that. Is there a second? Second. Am I a voting uh, member right now? Yes, you were appointed to vote. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And so the next, uh, the next item on the agenda is discussion of the commission projects and initiatives. And this is an update of the micro grants and small business grants programs that we've been working on. Um, and just to give you a quick, a quick update and then we can go through each one to see if you had any comments or, or questions about each program. Um, but basically, Sort of a, a divide and conquer kind of kind of thing. Jan did an excellent job framing out um, the criteria and requirements for the micro grant program and sort of the impetus behind it, uh, which is reflected in that document. There's a couple of things I was cutting and pasting, so there's some things that might be um, left over from the other program that we need to clean up. But um, that that is in place. And then the other piece is is the small business grants program, which again we tried to rough out the outlines of the program, sort of what is the purpose and intent. Who can apply for these? What kind of funding is available? How would we go about making awards? Um, and to start to, to think through that. This pro rough out of the program is sort of the first phase. And then the next elements that we need to talk about are creating application forms for each one and creating criteria by which applicants will be judged. There's sort of a, a two part, each, each different program has um, different phases on is to it that were modeled after other programs. We're trying to keep these sort of as streamlined as possible, but also being cognizant that we are using public funds for them. So that's a, it's a little bit of a higher, we can't just sort of give it out to the, the group that this group votes on, the board of selectmen actually has to make the award. So it's a little bit of a two-step process, but we've been trying to keep the EDC as a really sort of central and integral part of evaluating candidates, of asking questions, making sure that there's an initial vetting process, um, and then making a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen for award. And then we're also trying to build in opportunities to recognize folks more formally, whether, you know, in the form of an event, um, social media posting, really just sort of, again, exposure. The funding is enormous, but, but, but exposure and recognition, and I think as Dan, you know, kind of has alluded to in, in previous meetings, um, you know, connecting folks in ways that, um, you know, may, take the leverage the benefits of this program um, to help people connect with each other and to continue on with their, um, whether it's with their new ventures or, um, you know, with the businesses that they're working with now. So I think with that, I can put up on screen, if you'd like, the, the two, you know, one program at a time and perhaps have a chance to talk about each one and the differences between them um, so that we're sort of clear that we're dealing with two distinct programs here, um, one of which is, you know, sort of improvements to real property and things that stay with the land that, um, you know, are for folks to either get started in, in having a physical business location or improve the ones they already have in Waterford. And then the other one is for high growth potential venture opportunities, um, you know, to just sort of be some seed money that folks can use early on before they've really gone down the path of, of you know, gathering a lot of support um, and, and sort of being a stepping stone for them along the way. Um, is there either yeah. that folks prefer to chat about first? Well, I think it would be good if we take one at a time and then um, is the in intent for us to go through this? And I, I, I'm sorry, cause I didn't read it prior to the meeting, but um, should we just kind of run through it and then comment for the next time or comment, send comments in before, um, 
before the next meeting? I think it would be, for, from my perspective, at least, and anybody else can, can jump in, but it would, be, it would be useful if folks were to email me directly with comments. We don't want to get into a situation of kind of having a, an unofficial meeting by having everybody go back and forth or give it to everybody. But if you give it to me, I can com um, compile all of that and, okay. and go from there. So any feedback we get from you tonight, we'll, we'll incorporate. And then if there's you know, more to do, um, you know, we'll certainly try to get everybody's comments in and have another draft for the next meeting. I think we're, you know, we're trying, the, the best I've heard yet lately is that we're expecting the award of the, um, the, the the funding from the federal government to trickle through the state in the month of July. So I think the idea is that the program could be up and running, um, you know, to be able to start making grants by the end of the summer, early fall. So I think we want to try to have all of our ducks in a row so that when the money hits, we're ready. And this money, the, the funding for both these programs is coming from the same uh, designation as far as we're concerned, right? Correct. This is all this is all American Recovery Plan money. Um, so this is this is a, water, a portion of Waterford's funding. The last that I have spoken with the first electman, my understanding is that we're looking at about $150,000 between both programs. The caveat with that money is that it has to be spent within three years of the award. Um, so there will be some opportunities here to look through how we, um, you know, how we manage this. We're also trying to um, set up whatever special funding we need to be able, if we wanted to take donations from folks to be able to sustain this, and then also looking at building this into the fiscal year 23 budget, um, so that by the time the money runs out, the town has a funding mechanism to take a look at what's the tax revenues that have been generated by investing in our local businesses and where have we seen improvements um, and what's the value of the program that we can justify a capital expense to keep it going. So that's where we stand there. So I have up uh, right now the small business program. So this, um, this program is essentially in, in intended to be a grant to cover actual cost of, of physical project development. Um, some portion of it up to $5,000 could be used for plan generation. So the engineering repl you know, plans for things like stormwater utility connections or stuff that is, is going to, to stay with the property um, because those, those costs can certainly add up. But then also um, to take a look at you know, giving folks just real money for improvements that they've made on their property. Um, and so we wanted to, to go through that. We talked about um, eligibility. And so, you know, whoever is applying needs to be a Waterford based business. They can't have any tax delinquencies or other fees outstanding. No, no zoning violations or that kind of stuff. Because again, when we're talking about the, standards for the, the funding, we've got to be a little careful about that. Um, so we've had, we have it in here, but you know, we may want to rephrase it so it doesn't sound too sort of um, bureaucratic <laughs> as we go forward. Um, and, you know, as folks evaluate their projects, they're really meant to be, you know, focused on businesses that have an opportunity to support local employment, to grow the tax base, um, and to really sort of carry on with, with investing in Waterford's um, economic base. So we've given a list of potential like types of projects that could be eligible. Um, and they range, you know, they, they range from helping to meet, you know, costly regulatory compliance issues to um, facade improvements to public infrastructure, so they put a sidewalk in or, or that kind of stuff. Um, you know, if, it's, if they need to look at their, you know, water or sewer connection and upgrade that, those, those types of things. Um, so that's the, the list. And then, like we said, some pre-development costs. So things, if they needed to do an environmental cleanup, um, this could go toward that. If they needed to demolish something on site um, to get the site ready for, for new development, um, and then again some some site design and engineering costs. If those costs, whatever they are, whether they're physical or those design costs, aren't involved in real property, they wouldn't be eligible for this pot of money. The idea here is that um, you know property that really or, or improvements that actually would stay with the land and and continue forward are the ones that um, seem to have the most support from. Um, you know, our assessor or for selectmen, our finance director. So we tried to keep it in that, in that realm. Um, so that we can make the argument that if the town makes this investment, we'll recoup those funds in increased tax revenue over time. So the funding formula that we've come up with is it's based on Broughton's formula, which seems to have been successful for them. Um, and it, it seems to have resulted in grant amounts that are sustainable over the, the course of a project, but also um, you know, if you're looking in that $100,000, $125,000 availability of, of program funds, 
you can do multiples um, sort of at, at, the, at these levels. So essentially um, what we'd be looking at is the, the two metrics would be what's the cost of the improvement and after the improvement is made, what would Waterford expect in terms of tax revenue? And so we look at sort of the balance between the cost of the project and how much folks can expect to get back. So we try to give some examples of what that would look like. Um, so who's determining the annual tax revenue? So that's the assessor. Okay. So that, that's gonna come directly from the town. So what would happen is folks would, would provide their plans and say, we're gonna do this level of improvement, here are the improvement costs, and then they would assign a value and say, okay, after the improvement, the whole property value will be X. And for some folks that might be a very small jump up, but it's not the difference between what it is today and what it could be tomorrow. It's what is the tomorrow value? Um, so it, you know, for some folks, the improvement might only result in, in $10,000 worth of improvements, um, but, but the value, that the, the money that the town would be getting back is on that total cost. So we're not trying to ding folks if the, you know, the smaller improvement is, you know, would, they, it would mess up their eligibility or, or make the grant not really worthwhile. So um, hopefully this kind of balances out. One of the things I'd like to do is if folks have scenarios, if there are people that you've worked with that, you know, have done improvements in Waterford or elsewhere, um, you know, this would be a place to really kind of test this out and make sure that these formulas work and it works for Waterford, um, you know, to, to implement it. Like I said, it's it's worked in Groton, but I think we want to make sure that it is, is going to be useful here as well. Has, has Groton provided any, uh, could they give us one or two examples of projects that they did? So, yep, yep, they've, they've given us some anecdotally and I can I can pass those on. One was was sort of a larger developer who was going, um, you know, I think they wound up getting like $130,000 and they wound up doing a special appropriation through the, the council. Um, Specifically for it was a, a you know a greenfield that was um, being built on for either the first time or the first time in many years, and then there was a, another one. Um, there was a conversion of a commercial property to a mixed use, and some of the funds were used to take care of the upgrade to the sewer connection. Um, and and this formula worked for that as well. So the person the, the the applicant there was able to recoup fifty percent of that project cost after it was installed. Can I get a quick question in? Um, so the business owner applies for this money mm -hmm. and how is the landowner uh, affected or restricted from, or if this is stays with the property and, mm -hmm. and what if, what if the business owner owns the property? Are, are they ineligible or is this? Nope, not at all. So, so the, basically, um, if the business owner does not own the property and the, the, the property owner needs to sign on to the application and we would take care of that on the form. So it's, are, do you own the property? And if you don't, we need to provide proof that the owner is on board with what you're trying to do. If you own the property, then you just sign for both. So, um, so what if they lease the property and they have the right to do anything to it? Why do you need the owner? Because, well, because we don't know that, right? So, so they may have those rights, but and it, and it may be as simple as the you know the lease is provided with the application, but the town needs to know that the the owner of real property consents to the improvement being made. So right whatever it. agreements those folks have, we just need to make sure that we're not giving money to do something that the owner is. So when it comes to um, applications, you know, this is where I think we would work with this group to create that form, have it be a fillable form, hopefully something very simple um, with just a checkbox of here are the supporting documents you need. So cost estimates for the work, the design, all that kind of stuff. Um, and we want these to be turned around fairly quickly. So, you know, we thought 60 days was a reasonable time frame that it, that gives time for folks to to come in, get evaluated, for it to go through this, you know. So if, if there's anything missing, then staff can say, "Hey, listen, you know, your application's not complete. You got to answer the following questions." So the EDC has everything they need. Um, the EDC to to take a look at it, to make a recommendation, and then to get it onto a board of selection agenda for them to vote and award. So you know, it's um, it, it's a reasonable time frame in terms of the way it, the speed with which government works and our current meeting schedule. That's something that this group can talk about relative to if you know you'd be open to special meetings if there was something high you know high, sort of high priority coming through. Um, 
but again, since these are reimbursable grants, these aren't grants that folks are, are getting from the outset, um, that 60 days didn't seem unreasonable. And again, we just kind of talk about some of the criteria. Um, and then we had been kicking around between us and the first selectman's office, um, you know, sort of by, you know, what are the, the ways in which the EDC would, would judge and make recommendations and to the board of selectmen. And so these were some of the criteria in terms of fund disbursement that we talked about. Um, so again, you know, tax value, um, there's no delinquencies, you know, again, small businesses. And I think we, we wanted to define and haven't done that yet, but define which small businesses, because, you know, a hundred people or less that, that might meet an SBA definition, it would be different perhaps from the scale of businesses um, in Waterford that folks want to support. That's something that I think the commission can, can kind of weigh in on and, and talk about what is what makes sense. Um, and again, you know, sort of the job creation or retention, you know, that's a number of places have that similar kind of requirement to say, listen, this is about, you know, sort of creating real value um, for the economic engine in Waterford. And, you know, these are all criteria that we, we want you guys to weigh in on and let us know what you think if these work, if they don't work, if there are other ideas that you have in terms of how we might judge these, these applications. One of the things that we would do if somebody's awarded, um, you know, would be you would you would get a letter um, from the town. So if there's anything folks need to bring to the bank or anything like that, and loans, then we can can go and, and give some support there. Um, and then for reimbursement, um, again, these are things the town you know the town would pay after we know that the you know the final approval has been granted and the you know, improvement's been made. Um, so that would be sort of the criteria there. Um, again, because they're public funds, you know, we're a little bit more. Um, Sort of bound by having to make sure that some of these things are, are done so it's not enough for them to say okay you know here's my, my certificate of occupancy and i'm good we need to know that nobody else owes money on this that there's nothing outstanding before we um, sign off on the grant and then again you know it, we're, we've talked dan and i have talked about sort of the the potential for periodic recognition events um you know to, to pick a, a location and a time and have the folks who um, were awarded here be recognized and then also to combine that with um, the awards process for the micro grant program. Would it be like a lien waiver with this? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it says. It's pretty, it's, I mean, it would just fairly standard, um, you know, most, most state grants and, and town grants that would, would come through would, would have some kind of um, release element. And then, you know, again, there's on the application forms is where we would put any sort of legal language, any hold harmless for the town of Waterford, any of those types of things. Um, and we'd be working with Rob Avina kind of to get that. Um, I think I had a question on how are we going to market this? So we've talked about a social media blast, getting things out through the chamber, um, you know, trying to, you know, use some of the, the channels and venues that businesses are already connected to. Um, I think this is something that this would be really helpful with and making sure that it's going out to your networks. Um, you know, I think the real estate community is an important one to get out to. Um, and so, you know, we will put together a list of kind of the press release, um, you know, and we'll have it up on the website. So press release with a link and that people can get to um, ways that they can get more information. And I think that's, that's one of the ways this group becomes really helpful is to see where we're missing um, coverage to get out to folks. And do we do we know how much how much in grant money that Groton has given out? Uh, total in the program, no, I can find that out. They've been they've been doing this for a number of years. Do we have uh, sectors assistance on this? Is that they haven't? Um, you know, they're certainly willing to, but they they haven't. There hasn't been a need yet. I think they're, you know, they're, they were talking about being able to, um, you know, help get the word out and um, they were looking at, you know, they said, oh, not many towns in southeastern Connecticut are doing this particular type of program, but Nancy thinks that, you know, we're going to see a lot more of it, especially as um, the, the new funding from the federal government trickles into towns and it's got such a, a strong economic development focus, we're anticipating that more folks are going to be doing this sort of at the scale. On the other program, I think I read it was 100 to 150,000 annually. Uh, but this program is a bigger amount, or what, what's the total amount of this? 
particular so the group. total amount that the town would my under my and again this is this is in conversation with the first selectman and the finance director we were looking at the range of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in funding for both programs this is the seed money to start this program okay so you know one of the things that we've talked about is how to make the program sustainable over time and that comes you know through things like setting up special funds where we can take donations, committing to capital investments. We had talked about um, structuring this, that the, you know, sort of the, that gap value between the former value of the property and the new value of the property could be put into a special fund to, to kind of rotate through this. That is a little bit in conflict with the tax increment financing um, legislation that's out there. And so we're waiting on a legal opinion to, to see whether or not we can actually so right now we're sort of into into capital and um, you know donations or town budgets. But that okay. startup money was for both programs. Correct. Okay. Out of curiosity, is there any like legislative action that needs to happen for these funds to be released to this body or not for this funding source? Okay. But there would be obviously, as you well know, if it were to be anything that were budgeted through capital or operating funds. And that's how we may replenish this in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and certainly, you know, as time goes on, we can look for additional grants to keep it going and, and those types of things. But but right now, we would have this three-year window and around $150,000 to, um, to apply to projects that, that the commission thought had value. So I think, you know, again, and, and part of this, I think, is starting at a reasonable scale that we can show some some success um, and, and, you know, have a few of those stories under the belt before going back in to ask for funding from the town or, you know, sort of demonstrate some success before, you know, likely being eligible for grant funding. Are there any current projects we know of that qualify for this? No one's come forward because they have, because the program doesn't exist. There's, you know, there's certainly work that small businesses are moving on all over town. Um, and I know there are folks who I think would be interested in this, but, um, we haven't really gone out to advertise that it's it's coming in many ways because we we need the program to be a little farther along before we kind of get the word too far out. And and again, we don't want folks to have sort of an unfair advantage. But you know, there's somebody who's doing a renovation on Boston Post Road is very interested. Um, there's another one on Rope Ferry Road that expre has expressed a little bit of interest that if it were to be pot, you know, likely they would want to want to jump in. So yeah. I think that once it's out there, I, I do think that we'll get applicants. Um, there's, there's folks doing renovation work or upgrades on their, their businesses all the time. A lot of it's going to come down to the criteria that this group thinks is, um, you know, the correct way to compare between projects and, and gives you a very clear path to, to say yes or no. I have a question. Um, so is this for new businesses only or is this also able to support existing businesses as it's, well? It's meant to be for both. Okay. Yep. They just need to be in water for Exactly. Yep. And the reason that it's, um, you know, it's tied to the real property pieces is in part because of the new business piece. So if somebody's business venture fails, we don't want to necessarily have bought their kitchen equipment, um, you know, and, and that doesn't either stay with the property or, or any of that kind of stuff. So the, it, it was modeled off of that opportunity to, to recoup and sort of permanently those improvements. I think it's a great job. I think I think once we we get going, I think you know our biggest challenge is going to be um, you know once the word is out would be you know some folks are going to get the funds and some folks aren't and there may be in each cycle you know yes we have one hundred and fifty thousand dollars but we've got three years to spend it and folks in the beginning we're gonna we're gonna give grants of up to fifty thousand dollars or seventy five thousand dollars to that um, you'll have to decide kind of where where you think that should go to that point, then do we need to really advertise it? I'm sure you run into folks that are like, you know, they're hitting snags, right? And they're talking mm -hmm. to you about it. And maybe to that point, they just get referred to us. Does that sound reasonable or? I, well, I think we do, we would do both because we want to make sure that, that, you know, if folks are asking or folks are having trouble, we can certainly say, here's one venue, but we want to be careful that just because somebody hasn't come through the door with us yet, or, you know, that there's not some indication of favorable treatment or you know some people are in on the secret and some people don't know so i think we do really a blanket advertising thing with it with a deadline that says you know first round applications are here and then you know we'll see what the response looks like and if it's, if it's overwhelming we may so, sort of say hey there's a real need to expand this program folks and we start looking for more funds 
looking for. Yeah. I think I think it also it also then lets you look at a wider variety of projects and pick the ones that you know really make the most impact. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, you know, it, it's the best kind of rise to the top. So we're not just picking the first five people that apply. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this one, it de definitely, I think for both programs, it's important to do them, um, you know, sort of in cycles. So we, we announce an opening and we do a big release on it and then we have a deadline so that it's not, um, yeah, it's not that first come first serve. Any more thoughts on this on the this the sort of infrastructure physical improvements grant before we move on to the micro grants? What what would be the process for approval? Like what does that look? I know we touched on a little bit, but like what are the so steps? yep. So the way that we were looking at this would be um, so we have an application deadline and that starts this it's the sort of 60 day clock. Um, we get we get the application our department and the assessor does that initial review one to set the value of whether or not that project improvement meets that two-year anticipated tax revenue um ratio and then um we would say okay it's complete we've done our reviews there's no outstanding problems here this is you know a project to get the permits and do it you know whatever it needs to do legally through the town and then we send it over to you and you would have a set of criteria and scoring, uh, you know, sort of matrices that would help you make this decision so that it doesn't get seen as like an arbitrary way of, of looking at it. Um, so that there's some consistency and also for the applicants so they know, you know, how to structure their applications. Um, so to take a look at what your, you know, what your priorities are. It is so once you've made a recommendation, so the hope is that, you know, you'd have a, a block of applications and we would complete them by the next cycle. Um, so we would weed those out for you. The complete applications would come to you and at your meeting, you would have a chance to, to go through them, to talk about them and to make your recommendations to the Board of Selectmen as to who should get the award. So it would be sort of a, you know, here's our finding. These folks are eligible and we think they met the criteria and bring the most value. And these are the ones Board of Selectmen we recommend. We take those recommendations, those go to the Board of Selectmen and they say up and down, finally, whether the money gets distributed. I don't know if there would be a huge you know conflict or difference um but i think what, what you're doing is sort of the hard work so the board of selectmen can say yes we, we support um you know hopefully to support the edc's recommendation where, so does that, are, where does our criteria come from is there like a list of things that it could be used if you have a if you have a building i know that the other day you mentioned if the sewer line was not good or the or things that would improve the property but what about the building itself what about if somebody goes in and the porch is falling down and they want to fix the porch is that does that qualify not yet no i, I don't see why it wouldn't um you know we have building additions here we could add you know structural improvements to accommodate you know the business that is, is in there that could be something as well um you know i think as long as it's something that stays with the land i think if this commission wants to, to fund it I think that we just need to, to list these out. So we did examples of projects here. Um, and, and again, it's, you know, we tried to sort of say, these are the kinds of things. If you want to add to this, take away, we can certainly, you know, take a look at that too. And then um, that, you know, in terms of, of the eligibility. And then when we talked about um, the criteria for how we evaluate them, we list that a little bit later. And that's something again, where I think this group, as you're looking through your feedback, how we kind of got you started on a list, but we need to talk about how we would evaluate and score these projects between each other. And, and again, you know, there's certain things you can just tick off, right? Is it a water for business? Point there, great. Are there any outstanding violations? Yay point. Um, where it gets a little bit more tricky is what your priorities are. Do you want someone to have to demonstrate that there's a gap in water for economy and we need a certain kind of business or this is, a business that will, um, you know, touch a lot of other businesses in terms of supply or services rendered or those kinds of things. So, you know, I think it's, you know, or, you know, they're, they're planning to hire X number of people within, you know, two years or whatever, whatever that looks like. Um, I think that you need to set what those priorities really look like so that it's not kind of a willy nilly. And again, so people understand what it is. So it's not just, you know, hey, I need to do some structural stuff because I'm bringing in a new piece of equipment um, versus someone who is, I need to build this addition so I can expand my operations and hire two more people. 
So, you know, that kind of distinction, I think we need some criteria to sort of rank them. Yeah, I mean, there's no way to hold somebody accountable to that they hire two people. We can't put contingencies in it like that, right? I mean, no, I think you can use it as a as a metric to compare and contrast the intent of project applications, case. but that's why it's a real property improvement because we, we can't, you know, we don't have the ability to to guarantee that, that you know money is out there. And I think when when we talk about this program with folks, um, you know, at least around the around the town hall, some of the questions and concerns that were out there would be. Are we throwing good money at businesses without having any return to the town on on the town's investment? And so that's that's really the reason of tying it to the values. So, so some, something like additional revenue or job creation, you know, those could be like that type of criteria. Yeah. Yeah. So these would be vetted legally before they come to us or after. And I, I apologize if you already I got I missed it. Yep, it was so it would be before. So so we would do, you know, the assessor in the planning department. And if we thought we had something that we needed additional assistance, call in attorney or whatever else we need. Um, but we are, you know, the utility commission, we would go around to all the town departments to make sure everybody's current there's no other issues. Um, you know, if it's a project that involves an improvement that would tie into a state road, we'll talk to DOT. We'll do all of that vetting for you before it comes to you. So what goes before the EDC? are approvable projects. We as staff would not rank them. We wouldn't, you know, sort of exclude someone who has applied, um, you know, if they might fall lower on the criteria than perhaps another project, that's the role of the EDC. So we're not making the value judgment of who should be funded. We're saying they've got a complete application, the project they brought is eligible, um, you know, and it's past that first sniff test of is there any, you know, red flags legally or from the land itself or anything else about what they want to do. What we're trying to do here is, is really vest a lot of the, you know, the agency with the EDC. And I think it's one of the ways in which we make the EDC, you know, have a little bit more relevance than it's had in the past in terms of, you know, really being able to, to steer and, and guide where, um, you know, how, how development is supported in town. Well, I think this is a, a great job you, you all did, so. So we can move on to the next one. Unless anybody has more comments on this one? And I'll switch over to micro grants real quick. So we can certainly change the background. I was just looking for some commercial <laughs> visual of Waterford that was not the uh, word template background. Um, Dan, I don't know if you want to jump in at all on this to, to talk about the program itself before I start babbling. Sure, I'll give a little guidance. And I wanted to propose, since we're 34 minutes into our meeting time, could we agree to time box this discussion to 10 minutes so we leave time to talk about the election of officers? Because I think that's an important topic I want us to get to. Sure. Everybody okay with that? Great. So this program is a fork of the Small Business Grant Program. And the idea here is to provide some money to enable support for high growth startups. And what I mean by high growth startups is not service businesses, not retail stores, not restaurants, but companies that can scale. So we're talking about product companies, technology companies, software companies, intellectual property and research companies. These are the innovation drivers of our economy. You know, I heard it referred to as these kinds of startups are the red blood cells that bring new oxygen into our economy. This week, you may have seen that the Senate, in a rare act of uh, competence, passed a bipartisan bill called the U.S. Competition and Innovation Act, and it puts $50 billion behind driving these kinds of innovative businesses to help us compete better with some of our partners worldwide, such as China, that are, you know, <laughs> with all due respect to American innovation kicking our butts in terms of generating IP. Um, we've become a, com a country that does a lot of licensing instead of a country that does a lot of inventing. So Waterford can be a place that some of these kinds of big bets come from. And this program is, is, is intended to try to make it easier for some of these kinds of moonshots to get started. It's in a lot of cases easier technically to start a high growth startup today but in a lot of cases, it's more difficult financially to start these kinds of startups today because banks won't talk to you. Venture capital only goes after multi-billion dollar opportunities. 
And there are lots and lots of companies that could be getting started here if only they had a little bit of access to capital. Thanks, Jim. So, so, so similar to the other program, we've tried to lay out some criteria here. Um, and Dan has done a quick check for me, and there's certainly some things that may overlap. So, if you see real property mentioned in here, it's it's a holdover from the other one. This is not about real property at all. Um, we talked about eligibility, um, and and Dan had come up with some criteria for things that have worked in other other places. Um, so we're talking about early stage folks who are really truly just starting out um, and, and have not gone very far down the um, you know the fundraising road as as of yet. Um, we tried to create or Dan created a list of potentially eligible costs. Um, again, trying to say what are the you know where are the places that are the funding would be most most useful um, and and sort of go the farthest. These are not meant to be you know significantly large investments. These are meant to, you know, sort of sort of signal that Waterford is here, we're open for business, and to open up a conversation and community space for other folks who may be interested in investing or, you know, kind of creating that culture around, um, you know, sort of the, the startup um, ethos. And so I think that there, this is really intended to say, listen, you know, we are the first year we've got $25,000 out of that 150 that, that we would put toward this program. And that enables us to look at up to five potential um, companies and, and whether we get five, whether we don't get five, you know, we'll have to, to sort of see. And if we don't, we'll have to the next year. Um, but, but the idea being that we, um, you know, we, we really do, a, this, this one I think especially would need a large and early sort of advertising get out the word campaign for folks to understand this. So the folks who are starting up may not be as well. They're connected into local um, email lists and all that kind of stuff as perhaps some of the, the, the folks who are already operating businesses. Same sort of process, we would do like a pre-application kind of piece to make sure that, you know, what people are submitting is complete, that when things come to you um, for your review, that it's not, um, you know, that it's not missing pieces or, or any of that kind of stuff. And then we would go ahead and um, we set some, you know, again, criteria to, to this stuff. Now, some of these criteria are just kind of copied and, and, and over from the other ones. So again, you know, the, the way in which, um, you know, job creation in Waterford may not be relevant, right? And it's, it's we have a little, you know, sort of different, different scope here. So I think we need to evaluate what that criteria looks like. Um, but the intent here would be, Staff does an initial review, makes sure people are complete and ready to go. EDC reviews the applications and selects a finalist. Um, and then there, we do sort of a pitch event for folks. And again, this is trying to create some buzz and some interest in, in what's going forward so that um, you know, we create, again, a space that people can get excited about, get some recognition, um, get the word out, and, and sort of show the ways in which Waterford is being supportive. And so um, the way we have it set up right now is that finalists do the pitch, and then at this event, they're actually, you know, awarded at the event, in terms of, of you know, first or however we want to think about that, um, and go and go from there. And the idea with this is that as soon as the award goes out, we're moving to to get them their money. We're not holding on to this; they don't have to do anything else for it. We'll likely be, you know, we'd be checking in with them over, you know, six months, a year, two years to see how things have gone. Um, but we want to we want to give out the cash. This is Waterford Shark Tank. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without the, uh, yeah, <laughs> without as much as the hype. So again, you know, it's, I won't go too far into, you know, a lot of the, you know, how we do an event and all that kind of stuff would be would be for, for later. But, um, but this one, I think, has a little bit less in terms of you know, it, you know, folks are gonna have to do a business plan and make sure that we understand how that all comes together. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the rough out. So I'll I'll be quiet so folks can comment. I just think this is a great compliment to the other one. It's a it's a very different program geared a different way. So you know, it's going to be you know, I would. I would make these brochures look very different because they kind of look the same, you know, but um, but otherwise I think both the programs are good. And I, I think it would be kind of cool to have a shark tank type thing where other people could even come and hear about it because it may spark additional interest. Yeah, I think the idea would be that it would really, we try to keep it open to anybody who's 
sort of in, you know, the investment world or who is interested and certainly in the early phases, I think, you know, kind of having it open to the public, you know, and, and making it sort of, you know, have some food trucks come on down and we'd, you know, really make a, a thing out of it would be, would be great. Innovation fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, and, and even like if it was something, you know, um, what is that? Uh, electric boat. I mean, they may be able to get, we could have other businesses listening in. So maybe they sponsor them later or help them with more too. Yep, absolutely. So I think, you know, from here, it, I think it would make sense, um, you know, for folks to take a deeper look at these to, you know, if you've got ideas in terms of criteria or eligibility of projects or other ways in which we should be evaluating um, these applications, you know, that would be something super helpful right now. And then, um, you know, and then the next step after we have settled on this stuff is, is really we, we need to start putting together the application forms and, you know, the technical backside, you know, back of house kind of stuff. Um, to make sure that it's ready to launch essentially um, and, and that we're, we're ready to go. So um, if there's anybody who wants to work on any of the form creation with us and you know, any of those, those sort of things that would be, would be useful. But in the meantime, if everybody can email me comments so that I can update the documents and send them back out to the group, that would be super helpful. When it is time to start uh, advertising a little and getting the word out, is there any like budget for that or is this all just kind of through our own networks and press releases and whoever wants to pick it up and yeah i mean right now so we could use some of the grant funds for that purpose i think that we you know we need to decide whether or not that would be a recommendation to do um and in that that the final decision would get made by the first electments so whether or whether or not we want to try to do something through the very limited advertising funds that the edc has um or if we'd really try to say listen this is going to be a big networking push and we, you know, we have a lot of, I mean, between the chamber and sector and, you know, various ties to business communities and influential folks in, in our community, I think there's a, a way to get the word out. Um, but Definitely. And, you know, send it to the day. I'm sure Sten will write something about it. It's, it's mm -hmm. for the water for time. It's definitely interesting. Yep. I can pitch it to work and see if they might pick it up as sort of like a bigger, I don't know if I've mentioned it to this group yet. I don't anymore but um i work for connecticut public so we're the affiliate for pbs and npr mm -hmm. so they might do kind of like a larger piece since we're in this period of economic recovery on like what towns in connecticut do have these sorts of programs and use this kind of as an example mm -hmm. so we can definitely work on that yep i think our right. chamber of commerce could also mm -hmm. um, help yep. leverage into the existing business community um, yeah they've been great about I, doing I, the last time I spoke to Megan at Chamber of Commerce this week about this, and they're excited to partner with us. Excellent. So I'll, I'll awesome. wait comments and, and get folks out um, another draft. If folks can, you know, maybe by middle or end of next week, get me your comments so I can send something back out. I, I, I certainly don't know that we want to wait a whole another month to um, try to solidify these brochures and get them updated and kind of into a form to be happier um, showing them to the public. Awesome. Okay. So that's, um, so that was item three. Item four, um, town development project and permitting status. There's, there's no new applications to report on now. There's, there's certainly um, activity and folks coming in to ask questions and doing preliminary project um, discussions, but there hasn't been, um, we're sort of waiting on a number of applications to come into this at this point. I don't know, Mark, if you have anything to add about that. Uh, no, no, we're just, you know, going along. I guess if uh, members have any questions on any ongoing projects or seeing around town, we might be able to answer answer any questions or uh, uh, anything anything relative to that. What's happening with Sunset Rib? So we've we've heard anecdotally that um, it was purchased, but no one has come in to talk to us about permits for for next phase. And again, if folks have questions going on, or if you, you know, if you ever are driving around town, and you're wondering about something happening, just pick up the phone and then we can kind of give you an option. Yep. Um, all right, number five, pavement of bills. We have no bills. Um, correspondence, There's, there was no correspondence. And so that brings us to item seven, other business, the discussion of the election of officers.
So we're looking at the opportunity you know, that we have here right now to um, elect a chair. Um, I know that at the last meeting we talked about Kevin's position as, as the regular position that has not yet been vacated. There's not been movement on that. Um, that is, has come from the first election to this, the staff. Um, so right now, Kevin is still technically in his his role, um, not as chair, but um, but on in that regular seat. Um, so I think it's you know we, we sort of waited last month to to have the discussion in any, any more detail, and folks were kind of considering back and forth, and then we, we we delayed. I think there's a you know again it's it's up to this group when you elect, but it is to move forward. I think important to figure out what the leadership is, is going to look like. Well, come on, people, come up with some ideas because uh, I, I want to uh, see what everybody thinks. Well, I would just say um, Dan took some initiative to go and meet with all of us. And um, uh, even if it's an interim thing till we get a little more established and going, or if he wants to do it, I would, um, I would uh, make a, a motion to nominate Dan to that. Cool. Yeah, I would say that definitely. I, I appreciate you know Dan taking the time to talk to each one of us, and you know just the effort put into the small business grant and the micro grant programs is, is awesome. So I would second that. Dan, what are your thoughts before we? Uh... <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, Jill, thank you, Eric. I appreciate your kind words. Um, I spoke about this with Rob, and uh, he also encouraged me to consider. Um, running for the role of chair and uh, I've accepted his, his recommendation. So if you'll have me, you can consider me a, a uh, formal nominee. I think that's wonderful. The only reason I was backing off on it is you had said that you really weren't interested in that, but if you are, that's wonderful. Yeah, uh, to be clear, my intention would be to help the, the group start to find a new path forward toward productivity and uh, trying to create an opportunity for somebody else to take it over when the time is right. So uh, I'm happy to help this group um, find a more productive path, um, but I can't say that I want to do this for the rest of my life. So um, I very clearly would love to work with all of you to determine who can succeed me. But it's, uh, it's, uh, it's humbling and an honor to be thought of in those ways. So thank you all. Any more discussion? Move to vote. Right. Yeah, we're on to a vote. That's all those in favor. Aye. 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 All right. You've got it. <laughs> we have a chair. That'll teach you. <laughs> Excellent. And that, that was the last item on our agenda. The next piece is adjournment. Um, Motion to adjourn. Oh, I had one thing I wanted to um, um, maybe mention. Um, on the Crystal Mall, um, we found some information about uh, the um, Macy's um, being under contract. And then I still have um, a note out to Simon who owns the, the majority of the property. And I just followed up with her again um, earlier today. So I'll, I'll still keep working on that. Excellent. Um, and I'm, I'm sort of in the background checking in with Sears periodically to try to see if I can get some traction on some of the, the ideas that we've discussed about um, yeah. Yeah, figuring out what the interest is there. And awesome. I do have a, a sample brochure of a, a, a lifestyle center. So I'll get that to Abby this week or, um, and then um, maybe next time when we meet, we can, you can all actually see something live because it, it's, uh, it's about a similar size project as well. And it's up in New Hampshire. That sounds good. All right, so we have a motion to adjourn. Was there a second? I'll second. Awesome. Everybody good with that? Yep. Excellent. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Nice to see everybody. <laughs>